Hey guys, welcome to CDCon. Today we're going to be talking scaling Kubernetes GitOps. My name is Arsene, I'm a field engineer over at Sousa Rancher. So let's get started. So we're going to be talking about what is GitOps, uh, what is Fleet, and how Fleet differs from competitors and scaling Fleet out to a million clusters. So GitOps is a way we can give developers tools to deploy their applications and their workloads uh, from a Git repo. So we can use a Git repo as a single source of truth and developer can make a change to it and those changes will be reflected on the said infrastructure. If I was to go and go you know, modify that infrastructure manually and remove a, a say like a resource, then my GitOps tool will be able to alert me and say, you know, my infrastructure is out of sync with my single source of truth Git repo and would, you know, re remediate that situation. So this is where Fleet comes into the field of GitOps. So Rancher is an open source uh, management solution for Kubernetes. So we can create deploy clusters all through Rancher. Uh, what we've done is, you know, we've learned from lessons of creating Rancher and managing thousands of nodes that there needs to be a solution for managing, you know, thousands of clusters. And that's where Fleet comes into it. So Fleet is deployed automatically when you deploy a Rancher management server. You know, with the recent popularity of K3S, we've noticed that a lot more, you know, people are gonna be running single node clusters. And that's one of the key features went into when designing Fleet, is that it needs to be able to manage 1 million clusters around the globe. So when we wanted to, we also wanted to make sure it was the simplest system. And, you know, we, we used things that already exist like CRDs and build it on top of Kubernetes. So there isn't any special requirements. So why 1 million? So, you know, as we talked about K3S being donated to CNCF Foundation, so a lot more people are gonna be running, you know, small Kubernetes clusters on the edge, whether it's single node or just small clusters, there's gonna be a lot more of them. And, you know, the world is gonna be running on Kubernetes in a couple of years. And because, you know, Kubernetes runs on top of Linux, we have all these workloads that it manages. So whether it's managing the hardware or the actual application that runs on it, you know, we need a way to sustainably manage at a, at a higher scale. So this is why we need fleet you know, now because these clusters are the future and we need to be able to manage these at scale. So with fleet, what we can do is we can point it to a Git repo similar to the competitors uh, like Argo and Flux and they can look at the YAML files and Helm files and customized files and deploy them to a cluster or clusters. Where it differs though is we have a centralized uh, a server, so fleet when you deploy it, when you deploy Rancher, you deploy the fleet server that comes under Rancher. And what this means is it this uses a two-stage pool model, which means it's scalable. We'll talk more about that in a second. Uh, so fleet is runs on top of Kubernetes components and it's all driven by Kubernetes APIs. So this means it's easy to deploy and it's easy to manage. This also means we can have certain features like RBAC coming to it. The fleet agent is deployed on the downstream clusters. So you only need one agent. It doesn't always have to be connected to fleet and it can just, we can provide a small amount of information and it can just go do the rest for us. And it can also provide feedback on what's actually happening. When I, when, you know, when I roll out a new application or I change something, it will let us know how that application is reacting and provide us you know, with a useful feedback that we can then you know, figure out if there's a problem or if our application was successfully rolled out. So typically we would have fleet here, this would be the Rancher server. It would pull from Git or we can interact it directly with the Kubernetes API. And this would push out these bundles and you know, we would have these cluster groups. These cluster groups are just metadata. So in Rancher, you know, we can create clusters, whether it's on-prem or in the cloud, EKS, GKE or RKE, you know, we can just use metadata on those clusters and have create cluster groups based on those labels. And then we can roll out actual applications and workloads to those clusters based on what they are. So we could have say a, a edge cluster, we could also have a GPU load cluster. And with the labels, we can roll out different workloads to different clusters. So the main features of Fleet is that we can, we have the ability to manage policies, uh, we can deploy Kubernetes JAMA files, and we can even up, you know, you know, just and everything in Kubernetes now is basically being made where any mundane task or any system task that we used to do through the command line, we can do through Kubernetes. So this means more and more applications are going to be, you know, 
workloads are going to be tailored towards Kubernetes. And if we can deploy that to at a scale, that solves a lot of problems, especially when you come into infrastructure maintenance, you know, deploying applications, and also having a governance of all of the RBAC policies. With the monitoring, we can get a live status update on how the rollout's going, whether the configuration's in sync, uh, whether there's any issues and problems, and we can get logs on that. The centralized control plane also gives us visibility into all of, all of the downstream clusters. And then we can also apply RBAC on top. This means with larger organizations, you can have strict RBAC controls to make sure that you have controls in place to see who can deploy what and what can be changed. So the competitors are Argo and Flux, are the main ones that you know would be similar to uh, Fleet. So Argo is very similar to Fleet, but it has its own engine and it's got a push architecture. The push architecture is harder to scale. Uh, with Flux, it's a simpler design and it's there's no centralized control plane. So you know we can't app, uh, add in RBAC or we can't add in dashboards or monitoring this the rollout stage. So this is where Fleet comes in with the two stage pool. So you know we pull the information uh, to Fleet, Fleet pushes that out to its edge, and this is where you know we also use Helm as a deployment engine because we know Helm works with uh, it creates and updates charts and we can view the changes. So this means we can you know we can you know use that to do deploy our uh, change state, and then that's how we can you know do programmatic access to these bundles. You know, working with Git programmatically isn't uh, as easy as it seems. So then we have the push versus pull model. So we wanted to create Flux as simple as possible. So this means, you know, we've learned from Rancher and the problems that we had with the push architecture. So, you know, we would have these nodes registered into clusters with uh, Rancher and then push out configurations. That can be very chatty, it can be very noisy. And the problem with that is, you know, you have all this resources being tied up, you know, chugging through, figuring out where, what, what to deploy where. So the, where this is where Fleet comes into it. We push that uh, compute off to the edge. We just say, you know, Fleet pulls, you know, gets all the information from the Git repo. And then we post that, we, we send a couple of kilobytes of files down to the actual agent and we let that process where it needs to deploy all the files on that cluster. This means, you know, we are basically making it, you know, the control plane server doesn't have to be a huge uh, workload because all that compute power is being pushed down the line and to the edge. So that was a quick overview of what Fleet is. Uh, there will be a demo. Uh, if you guys have any questions about Fleet, uh, check out the Slack channel. Uh, check out the Suze and Ranger community for more information about Fleet and our other projects. Yeah, this has been great. Thank you, guys.